Diddles the Cat and the Squirrel's Tail Written and read by Phil Humphreys Tiddles was having a very relaxed morning. She stretched out on the silk cushion, rolling over and extending each leg as far as it would go, along oh, with a great yawn. She sat up and arranged her tail nicely, then started to think about lunch. As she composed herself, she gazed out of the patio doors at the end of the house and spotted something in the tree. She roused herself and walked slowly up to the doors to look out more carefully. There was something sat on a branch, something furry with a big tail. Her first thought was that it was one of the neighbouring cats trying it on, invading her sacred territory in an effort to usurp her position at the top of the metaphorical tree. However, as she studied the creature, it became clear that it was none of the cats she knew. In fact, it looked rather small for a cat, although she had to admit that the tail was very impressive. This called for some more in-depth inspection and quite possibly a sharp reprimand. Tiddles strolled through the kitchen, pausing for a sip of water and a kitty crunchy, and made her way to her special door. She had decided on stealth rather than a full frontal assault, so she eased herself through the flap very quietly, and held close to the side of the house as she began cautiously to make her way. She took the left-hand side of the garden, as that afforded more cover and would allow her to study this new adversary before engaging with it. She was soon close to the tree, but could not see the creature any more. No, there it was. It was now on a higher branch, and all she could see was the tail. It was indeed a magnificent tail. Tiddles felt a sharp pang of jealousy. She knew from bitter experience that she could not take another cat's tail for herself, but likewise she knew that once she had made clear her feelings, that tail would never be carried so proudly again. Tiddles, it should be said, was not much of a tree climber. She was happy with walls and fences, and felt those were quite enough. However, this was no time to be timid. She leapt at the trunk of the tree and quickly gained the first tier of branches. She paused to check on the location of the tail. In her mind, the rest of the creature had effectively ceased to exist. She was fixated on that bushy, sinuous tail. There it was, almost directly above her head, albeit quite a long way above her head. Engaging her claws, she started to climb. One paw at a time, she moved in and out of the branches, staying close to the trunk. Higher and higher she moved, eyes ever upward. Then she caught a movement. The creature had leapt from one branch to another in a single bound, then run, head first, mind you, down the trunk, with the tail flying behind like a fairy banner. It was a squirrel. It was a stupid squirrel. Tiddles had, of course, seen them before, but well, this one had been far away, in the tree, shaded by the leaves, hiding in the branches. All right, she admitted to herself, yes, she should have realised, but that tail had mesmerised her. Hang on a moment. No, hang on for dear life. Tiddles suddenly realised she was higher than she had ever been before, and now following the squirrel's progress had made her look down. It was a very long way. She was now at the top of a very unmetaphorical tree. She dug in her claws and howled. She did not even think about the shame of being a cat stuck in a tree. All she wanted was to be on the ground, 
and to get back to her lovely cushion. Baxter, the dog who lived next door, was, as usual, running wildly around his garden, sniffing and scratching at everything. But the heart-rending howl stopped him dead. He looked up at the tree. Seeing Tiddles, he began to bark. He jumped and barked, he ran and barked, he scratched at his back door and barked. Soon his people and Tiddles' people were drawn into the garden to see what all the fuss was about. Tiddles saw her woman come out and she howled to her. Surely, just for once, she would understand a little basic cat speak. Yes, she did. In just a few minutes the people next door had unearthed their ladder from the garage, and Baxter's man was making his way up the tree. Tiddles let out a final howl, but seeing sense withheld the hiss and the scratch she would normally have delivered, and allowed him to scoop her up and carry her down to her woman. Tiddles meowed her thanks many times, and even managed to briefly steel herself to rub her head against Baxter's side in gratitude. Everyone was laughing and toasting Baxter, but Tiddles quietly retreated to find her cushion, where she stayed all afternoon, and preened her tail, which she decided in the end was actually far superior to that bushy monstrosity on the squirrel.